So your chief complaint you're talking about is your low back pain with sciatica pain going down to both your legs. Correct. Right? Yeah. And you notice which side's worse. The right side. The right side's worse. You also mentioned during consultation, you also been having some muscle spasms in the mm -hmm. area. Can you point to me where do you feel it? Uh, on my calf, right over here, and then sometimes uh, my thigh. Okay, so you notice more the gas shot. Um, yeah. Okay. On what, let's t let me turn around a bit. On which side of the gastric do you notice more? Would you say on the outside or the inside? The inside. The inside more? Yeah. Okay. All right. And do you notice anything else going on with your toes or the foot? Uh, I just know that this one hurts a little when I walk, like or stand too long. Mm -hmm. um, but it, like the, 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 the balls of your feet? Yeah. The middle torsos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then like maybe this one just like right here, like the corner. Corner. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start isolating the nerves a bit. All right, so go ahead, push down as hard as you can, like a gas pedal on the car. Good. Push down hard, relax. Push down hard, relax. Push down hard, relax. Push down hard, relax. Push down hard. Okay. okay. No, just relax. Push down hard. Push down hard. Push down hard. Okay, what's very interesting is the fact that, as you see over here, she had more muscle strength on the first, second, third, and fourth toes over here. She was able to push down more, whereas her left one had trouble doing so. However, once we start going to the fifth, push down hard, she has more strength on here, and this was weak. So what that tells me is that, okay, so her, the big toe is usually the fourth lumbar nerve. And these toes over here, two, three, and four, usually the, the fifth lumbar nerve and overlapping with the sacral nerves at the fourth and predominantly sacral nerves on the fifth toe over here as well. Now, so now that we isolate things in terms of muscle strength, okay, in terms of what's going on the tibial nerve, going down to the medial and plantar nerves, we're seeing, okay, now we're seeing that the fourth, I'm sorry, the fifth lumbar nerves are compromised on here, and whereas the sacral nerve is compromised over here. So, so what I'm seeing over here is that, okay, there's something really interesting going on because why is this right hip just not moving too well whereas the left is moving? And why is it so rigid and stuck over here? Now, bear in mind when we're babies, what do babies do? They crawl, right? Now, as we get older and stronger become more into upright position, we, our biomechanics change where we're still using our shoulders as more like a pendulum, like a counterbalance along with the hips. So the fact that this is this is starting to lock up. This is starting to lock up as well. So now we're going to investigate, see what's going on over here, over here, on this area over here. To get the bigger picture of what I'm seeing on this pelvis, right? What I'm seeing right off the bat is that, okay, your left ilium over here, it's narrow. The width is narrow. And see on your right one, it's very wide. So when we take a look at your pelvis itself. At the moment, it's doing this. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when we take a look at the lumbar vertebrae, but also, it's good. I'm seeing it rotating along for the ride. Okay, so it's following along the path as it should. Now, if you want, if you want that body to turn to the right and the rest of the body go like this, then I would really investigate what's going on because that is not normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's sort of like driving a car. You turn the car to the right. Yeah. I'm sorry, the steering wheel is to the right, but the car's turning to the left. Yeah. That does not make sense, yeah. right? The same thing as well. So, so far, it's following along. So, the whole entire pelvis rotated this way. Lumbar is rotating this way. Now, I'm following along the track until we see what's going on in that seventh dorsal over there. The seventh dorsal vertebrae, okay, I'm seeing your, this right rib over here, it's more expanded. See this over here? It's all symmetrical, but this one went up that way. And as you all know, that suddenly turned to the opposite direction. So again, since your whole entire spine is turned this way, on the seventh, it did that rotation. And the rest of the body went this way as well. 
So why is that important? Because let's face it, if your whole entire body is rotating like this way, you can't walk this way. Mm -hmm. So that's why your cell dorsal vertebrae be compensated to go like this way, to try to keep your head straight on. Now, I'm also looking at the atlas itself over here. Ideally, it should be level like this, parallel to the floor. And also, I don't want to see rotating either. And yet, what I'm seeing is that your atlas, your turn anterior on the left, that means your head's still turning along with this way. So, so far, that's a good sign. Your whole entire body rotating this way, your head's going this way as well. Seventh dorsal is kind of rotating to compensate by that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what I, what I would, you know, is it a good idea to address that seventh dorsal vertebrae? Maybe not. So, that tells me, okay, let's focus a lot more on what's going on over here. Now, in addition to, we see on the lateral version over here, this is too much curvature going on over here. Now, when we draw a plumb line, okay, the gravity line from the 12th dorsal vertebrae, see this? It should be lining up here, not way back here. So in essence, what you're doing is, you're doing more like the Lumba over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, going way backward over here. So can we walk like this way? Mm -hmm. We can't do that either. So your body starts recompensating going like this position over here. So that's when we're seeing an excessive, you know, hyperkyphosis over here. As in other words, if you let that fella sit down, okay, sort of like rust that first starts, mm -hmm. and as it gets progressed over time, if we don't fix that rust, what happens? The rust spreads, gets worse, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the spine is gonna steadily rust, as in other words, gets that that arthritis, okay, is also known as osteoarthritis or degenerative trunk disease. Eventually, you're gonna see some of those grandmas and grandpas with that nice little downward hump, okay? So that's how it starts forming. So, in other words, it's already in the process, even yes, at your mid 20s, at this young age, if we don't address this, eventually we're gonna to get to that point 40 years down the road. Wow. And I think that's something you wanna avoid, right? Yeah. Same thing with the neck over here as well. Normal, we want to see the neck going like in this direction. But instead, you want the opposite direction like this. Why? Well, this is more like a final circuit breaker, a defense mechanism. So if your whole entire spine is rotating like this quite a bit, okay, and we can't walk this way, seventh dorsal vertebrae, recompensated this way, but that doesn't solve anything, it goes like, hey, what the heck, my head's facing this way. So my body's rotating this, the lower part's going this way, now it's like seven dorsal vertebrae overcompensated. Now my head's going this way. I can't walk this way either, yeah. right? So that's why the head, it went that way as well to try to rebalance everything else. So the real answer is, okay, we gotta like get it to over here, right? Mm -hmm. Address the foundation itself. But again, because you're so wound up like this, okay? How do you like your brain to be like really badly twisted up like that? It doesn't like it. So as that defense mechanism, the body is trying to unwind that spinal cord. And this is that circuit breaker. That's what it does, all right? Now, we also see that in your atlas here as well, okay? This should be leveled. We're looking at the atlas right over here. But instead, what it did, and that's what I'm seeing here, it tilted quite a bit. Right? So that's what we're seeing over here. You're not leveled. Your head's tilting down to the right. So sort of you're going like, like this, all right? So again, to try to unwind all that imbalance over here. Mm -hmm. Now, am I too concerned about just in there? Not really, because again, I've seen nothing but biomechanically, just compensations. So now let's take a closer look at what's going on in this pelvis here. As a recap, okay? It's narrow over here, wider over here. Therefore, your pelvis. Therefore, the pelvis is rotating at this direction. Mm -hmm. Now, how's it pelvic tilting forward and backwards? When we take a look at the lateral, okay, this sacrum over here, ideally I like to see a 45 degree angle, okay? But instead, it tilted just slightly downwards. As if they want a little bit anteriorwards. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it doing that? Well, 
Now, the textbook says that if we have a significant external rotation, and that's what we see here, this is your gluteal fold line, ideally it should be smack in the middle, but it went way over to the left. So that confirms us, you know, yeah, we're going way over this way. Vision two, I'm looking at this width over here. It's narrow here, wider here. Narrow here, wider here. So everything's confirmed, telling me it's rotating this way. Okay. In addition to, okay, I look at the obturators over here, obturator shadows. The height is pretty much the same. So that tells me, no, we don't have too much tilting forward or backwards. It's just predominantly rotating this way. Now, now here's the other thing too, right? Your whole entire pelvic should be leveled this way, but it's tilting this way, mm. right? Now, this is what makes this case a little tricky because if we want pure, pure textbook case and we try to address this one over here because so far, the sigma over here, it will go anterior in the presence of an EX missile line. As long as the pelvis is externally rotated on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. However, if we do that, okay, the textbook also says that this one over here, it would make it go higher, okay? Now that's something what we don't want because the pelvis is already rotated yeah. this way, yeah. right? So do we really want to make that even higher? Mm -hmm. Now, that would be a very, mm -hmm. you know, you would, it would help maybe temporarily one area, but yet make things even more worse because we also see the lumbar spine is curving this direction as well to try to rebalance this, you know, the pelvis itself that's not being leveled over here, okay? So again, since it's tilted this way, the lumbars have no choice but try to curve to try to rebalance this curvature over here. That's what we're seeing is it's tilted towards this way, this way, this way, that way, this way, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we have to rebalance here. So now when we take a close look at the sacrum itself, I like to see all these sacral sediments in a straight line. But what's going on over here? It's bowing this way, all right? So when we take a close look at the sacral segments, okay? This should be, again, a nice fluid rainbow arc. But instead, there's a posterior wedge right on the third sacral segment, right over here, okay? And the same component right over here. That's what we start to see at the very arc of this bowing over here. And that's the third sacral segment right over there. Right? So that help it also explain why I'm seeing your gait as well. The body is trying to swing around that segment because the third sacral segment, as we see, is right at the very bottom part mm -hmm. over here. Okay, do you feel that difference, the pressure you're putting onto my hands? Mm -hmm. Okay, which one's stronger? And which this one's one feels stronger. It feels stronger, right? Yeah. And you're not putting too much pressure on your left, on your right hand. Correct? Correct, yeah. So what's going on is this, and I also was noticing and you're, when you're raising your, your your knees up, which side you felt a little harder to do, your right side or your left side? The right side. Your right side's harder, correct? Yeah. So now, now it's at that particular point while you're raising your knee, okay? If you had a much more higher segment, like the first sacral segment, okay? The moment you start raising the knee, I would, I am anticipating this could be a little fixation, it's a little harder to raise it up. And as we go into the 45 degree position, that's when the second sacral segment starts to get engaged. When we start to get closer to 90 degrees, okay, that's when the third sacral segment go a little higher as the fourth, and given going higher up, this will be the fifth sacral segment, all right? Because as we start to raise it up, see that? It starts to put, more pressure onto the sacred area that joins themselves. Mm -hmm. So basically when we start to get to the 90 degree position, that's what I notice as this is going down this way, it really impacts right here at the lower part of the sacred in that joint, that sacred, third sacred segment, that's the trouble on you. Now we're gonna take a closer look on the on the examination, see what else is going on. As we see over here, there's nothing but heat swings. Okay. This instrument is not showing me any readings whatsoever. Until we get something way down here. I 
And you also see it, see this big puffiness, that huge swelling right down here. It's not okay, there is a slight little swelling over here, but you see how big it is? This one over here, this is all fluid. So that's why there's a reading right at this level, way down there. And we're gonna check elsewhere, see how the neck is doing. See, there's nothing but heat swings. Okay. That's all there is. There's no reading anywhere else in the body. It's only just this spot. And to reconfirm the mid back, see, yes, there's some puffiness or swelling over here, but when we, when we scan it, it's nothing. This is compensation. So even though I would not be surprised when we do the examination, there might be some swelling and maybe some fixation and tenderness, but this instrument just confirms and tells me, it says, no, there is no nerve irritation. So this would not be considered a subluxation. This is actually a, a compensation. See, there's some fixation in that left limb right over there. The right one, somewhat fixated as well. How does this feel right here? It hurts, huh? Yeah. What about this one here? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that yeah. third sacral segment right there. Yep, it's jammed on that side. How's this feeling right here? Yeah, it feels like sore, but it also hurts. Which was worse, the top or the bottom? Bottom. Bottom. Okay, so this is the fifth one part. How's this feeling here? It's just like sore, but it's sore. Yeah. It doesn't hurt as much as the bottom one. This is your seventh dorsal right here. Okay, it's only partially fixated. So that's a that's another thing that confirms to me that this is a compensation. Because if there's a true subluxation, okay, we have to have fixation, you know, complete fixation. This is only partially fixated. In addition to there all has to be swelling, edema, muscle spasms, and you also, more importantly, have to have a, a instrumentation meeting at this level. There isn't any. So that tells me, you know, that confirms and verifies this is compensated. And everything else is moving just fine. Sit back. And we'll confirm that neck, the cervical regions. Okay, everything's moving just fine. See, everything is moving just fine, even for your atlas. Just slight fixation on the left hand side. You feel that? A little yeah. bit stuck there, right? On the left hand side. It's just very, very slight. That confirms me now. This is also a compensation as well. When I take a look at your discs, okay, you do have several compensations and some discs are compromised. You see this? This disc height over here? Yeah. Normal, I want to see it much thicker. All right. It should be at least double the height of that though. See how it's nice and big on the front over here? Very thin in yeah. the middle over here. So why is it doing that? Well, when the foundation itself becomes unstable, the whole entire body, basically it's like moving the whole entire thing around. Mm -hmm. Now, we would be like, whoa, very dizzy. This isn't fun, yeah. right? So to compensate, usually the fourth lumbar vertebrae right above it start locking things up. So in other words, while your whole entire lower pelvic foundation is moving like this, your fourth lumbar is staying put. Would that also cause unbalancedness? Correct. That's part of it. So I wouldn't be surprised and see that you have a lot of muscle spans going on your low back as well. Okay. Now, because the, the pelvic foundation is moving too much, normal movement should be like this. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's more like this. So what do you think is going to happen to that disc? It's going to start to grind away. And that's what we're noticing at this point over here. Now, in addition to, because your fourth lumbar vertebrae got stuck, okay, your whole entire lower body is moving too much. 
But here's the thing, you still gotta rotate and move your body. So if your fork lumbar vertebrae is stuck and not moving, guess what's gonna happen? The bones above it, they have to move more to compensate. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're seeing here in your second lumbar disc over here. Okay, see how much more bigger it is over here? Mm -hmm. And see how it starts to swell over here? We'll come a little closer over here. You can see the borders of that disc. Can you see how it's like, you can see a little shadow over there. It's bulging out. All right. So that tells me, oh, this is another compensation. So all we're going to do is wait another 5, 10, 15 more years. This disc over here, it's steadily going to progress from here to here and eventually here. Wow. So how do we avoid and address and let the body start regenerating in this? You know, that's a culprit that's over the whole entire down effect. All of this, just this, cause everything. As you can see over here, this is so swollen. You see where I marked is right at the very apex, the very peak of the swelling right here. So this is the fellow we need to address. There we go. There it is. Okay, come on up please. Okay, step back for me please. Now go ahead, put your hands on mine. Go ahead and mark them, please. You feel that difference now? Yeah. How's the pressure on my hands? It feels like a little bit more even versus earlier where it was like more pressure on the left side. Correct. And you can also see how is the legs feeling as you're marching in place. It feels like, yeah, like more light, like better. Correct. So that's what we're seeing as well. Now you start to have more evenness to pressure on your hands because again, your biomechanical connected from your hips to the shoulders. So therefore, once we start bouncing at your pelvis, the pressure, everything else, there should be equal pressure while you're marching. Mm -hmm. Should be same, yeah. not like tilted this direction, which we were doing before. Same thing as well, as you start to march in place with your knees, you should be symmetrical and nice and smooth. Go ahead, push down. Ah, push down. Okay, push down. Push down. Okay, push down. Push down. So we got sacral nerves start to be restored. Push down. Push down. Push down again. Okay, so we still have some of that fifth lumbar nerve being compromised. Now, as we see over here, because we addressed that, that third sacral segment, okay, now we start to see the fifth lumbar nerve is being irritated. It starts to show up at this level. How's this felt here now? Yeah, it hurts. See, now you start to show up. This fifth lumbar vertebra. We need to address this one. Right, right. Okay, now let's retest. Go ahead, push down. Push down. Mm. Push down. Tell me what's different. I feel like it's even, like the, the amount of pressure I put uh -huh. pressing down. Uh huh. So okay. this helps confirm. So it's not, we, we now done our job. The, the sacral nerves are restored, and even the fifth lumbar nerves are now properly restored. How is your calf muscles on your right, actually, on your both of your legs? How's that now? They feel like like light like even like versus earlier where it was like more like i felt uh like a cramp building up but now mm -hmm. it's like relieved i guess you could say. nice so no more cramps as there is the cramps are reducing the muscle spasms how's that it's better it's light like it's not as much as earlier great okay now bear in mind because you had that degenerative disc in that fifth lumbar uh fifth lumbar disc in addition to your foundation itself, okay, that's still unstable. And the viewer saw it. that's very swollen over there. It's the size of a nice, you know, yeah, I've yeah. seen it myself, right? So, what you do is this I want you to just ice that area over there, no heat. Okay. If you throw heat on that, it's gonna be like gassing on a fire, it's gonna make that fellow really inflame and blow it up, all right? So, instead, cold pack 20 minutes, do it every two hours, all right? Mm -hmm. Pump all that fluid out of the way, and we'll see you in the next visit. Okay, perfect. Thank You're all set. You. You're welcome.